I had no idea at the time what I was really getting involved in, how, how big it was and how significant it was. So it was really quite a moving experience, really. I can imagine it was really moving. And what was it like to be at the event with just so many people and it was all focused on speaking about, obviously, suicide and suicide prevention? Um, it was probably the hardest gig I've ever done or I'll ever do in my life. And um, I could, you, could, you could feel the, 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 the pain and the sorrow. You know, it, it, in some ways it was like a funeral for, for over 100 people because there was a lot of families there. And, um, yeah, it was... Uh, it, it, it was a pleasure, a privilege to do and an honour, but at the same time it really, really tested me as a person, as an artist. Um, and, and it was it was great really to do that. I had, um, prior to it, I'd had quite a few messages of people who were saying thanks for doing this. Um, it was all over social media, um, which meant a lot. So already the purpose of it, which is about to talk about it and break down the barriers, it had already worked before I'd even done the, the performance and I found that, you know, as a good thing. Did you manage to speak to any of the families or any of the people on the night who'd been affected? Um, I didn't, know. no. no. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, it was, uh, it was quite a lot, like, and I didn't want to intrude. You know, I, I said a few words and, and the song I sang at the end, a really moving song, and a lot of families was in tears and stuff and, and, and you know I think it's just sometimes best just to leave people like that but um, a couple of the people involved, uh, Dennis the organiser, uh, he, he told me about his own personal experiences and that was you know a big surprise because you, you, you know the thing is with suicide and that it's not a visual thing and there's, you know like don't judge a book by its cover and uh, the lady that was speaking as well, uh, Vicar, was, was it Vicar? Vicar? So, yeah. um, you know, she had a real horrendous story of, of her husband and when we were sat in the green room prior, you know, that, that's when it hit me as to the extent of what it was I was actually involved in um, and I had no idea how many people would be there and when we did the, the flag carrying, I mean, it, it was just, you know, unreal really. And I can see you've got the badge on the reach out badge there, so yeah. this is something that's quite close to you and close to your heart then? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, I know a few people over the years that, that have took their own life and um, it's really sad, you know, the people in that situation must be, you know, living a nightmare because they're, they're obviously not well. You know, I don't like using certain words, I think that does stigmatise it because they're always a bit mad or whatever, you know, and it can be took many ways, but the, the people I know close to me that I've lost over the years. I mean, you, you just you don't get an answer, and I think that's that's the hardest thing for the families. Uh, luckily, I've never lost anyone like super super close, but you know, I've a few friends in the music business, I know I've took their own life, um, and and it's just one of them things. A lot more seems to be being done now, and it's being accepted, um, and I've heard it's being put up in like standard workplaces. And, and that's what it, it does, and I don't think uh, money should be an issue. You know, they, they should uh, fund it, and uh, Dennis and Star and stuff, the things that they're doing, you know, definitely. You know, I, I've helped at least a dozen people by doing this, which is amazing, you know, and I, I'm not one of the staff. So I think uh, if you times that by 100 of the people that were involved, and I think it, it's a really great start to it all. And recently it's been, well, lots come out in the news and um, Matt Miller, of course, was recently dealing with a lot of issues. Do you see it as a lot of men? Do you see that? Yeah, well, um, three quarters of uh, men. Yeah, the statistics show that it, it's, it's predominantly men. Although I don't think, you know, the, the women and young girls should be um, uh, brushed under the carpet, as no, it were. Not. You know, it, it's, uh, and it's just so difficult um, in, in um, you know, men don't talk. I do. I don't mind me. You know, I, I'm um, I'm a tough lad from Salford, but you know, I don't mind having a good cry and, and opening up about stuff. And as I've got older, 
you know, I've found that uh, it's the best way to be and people really respect it and admire it and I think that's, that's the direction we're going. There's a danger with the internet, you can overdo it, you know, you can easily go online and Google something and, and it'll tell you this is your uh, condition. I don't think that's a good thing, um, but uh, if, if they keep pushing it like that and breaking down the barriers, and then that, that's got to help because it, it obviously is a, a massive problem. With, with the male thing where, you know, you, you, you're brought up and you're told, you know, you stand up, you know, don't be soft, all them things, you know, and, and it just needs to go that. I think the whole tag thing uh, needs to move. And, and the pressures now, um, I mean, I, I f think it's, it's kind of increased, the numbers, but the pressure's on men and women, but, you know, it's, it's huge now in life, you know, and, and you're forever under pressure in your job, you know, catching up, social media is running away with it, you know, people don't interact. A lot of people, their life is Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff like that and, uh, you know, I find like uh, Twitter's very bullying and, and it gives out a false sense of uh, well-being and security. The minute you switch your phone off and, you know, go in the real world, that's where you need to be. Um, and. I've, it, it, it's just, it's hard, isn't it, to, to think what it is that, that causes it. But I think society has got a lot to answer for, you know, and certainly the, the government bodies, you know, they, they need to really look at themselves as, as to what exactly they're doing to challenge it because it, it's clearly a massive problem and it shouldn't just be one day a year, the awareness. It, it should be, you know, a continuous thing and. I think it's probably one of the most important things at the moment in the health service uh, that that, they need, that needs supporting and funding. And do you think, well, with the It's OK to Talk campaign, and there are obviously awareness days, but you say it should be a whole year, I agree. Do you think enough is being done by the government and by local councils and communities? Do you think enough is being done to support people? Definitely not. Um, across the, the country, there's nowhere near enough being done for it, you know. And it's always people, ex-victim, victim, you know, people who've suffered that are instigating this new thing. You'll find, you know, it's all the people who've suffered themselves that are actually leading it. Mm. Uh, and finally they're getting a bit, but um, I think, in fairness, Salford City Council, uh, the mayor and uh, all the councillors was down here, and uh, Andy Burnham, you know, so in, in terms of Salford, I don't think... Uh, they, they, they really embrace it, um, and this, the city council lost one of their own, if you like. Um, Councillor Paul Longshaw, who took his life last year, a great guy. So um, they, they've really got behind it, and the mayor, Paul Dennett, you know, he spoke some great words, and he's, he's promised it would, you know, they would support it every year that event. Um, so I think it's a good start, but you know, it was ignored by the press and. You know, in fairness to Dennis and the team, they did the very best, you know. I called in a couple of favours, um, got involved, but, you know, it, this, this should be more. So probably next year, but, but you have to think, well, by this time next year, how many more lives would be lost and could have been saved? And, you know, the, you know considering we're supposed to be the sixth richest country in the world, it's absolutely... And, and it's, it's, I mentioned uh, before one of the songs I sang, about it's not about new buildings because you know if if you're struggling with with anything and it doesn't matter whether you're in work or not you know if you've got a few problems and you've got no one to talk to it's very intimidating all this new uh, growth and everything because it doesn't affair it doesn't it's not going to benefit you and, and uh, uh, you know they need to just take a side step back and and, and think you know what Let, let's really get stuck in here you know what what looks good you know necessarily not necessarily is good. Mm.